Kubernetes 1.30 RC release is already out and the official release is set to be released in May 2024. Now with every Kubernetes version, there are a lot of features that come into alpha. Some of the alpha features move to beta and some of the beta features move to graduate. So this is the life cycle. And with all new and fancy features, things need to be tested. Things need to be tested before they get released. There needs to be more feedback before things are released. This is this came after the tweet that Tim's posted about we need more people to test out the features, end-to-end -end tests, upgrades for the latest Kubernetes release. So this video is all about how you can actually create a 1.30 kind cluster in a very simple way and then try out new features, give more feedback, get involved in the Kubernetes ecosystem and community. So let's get started. And before that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, share the video and like it as well. So Kubernetes 1.30, there are a lot of features which are coming in, but I'll be touching very few of them in this particular video just to give you a context where we are heading towards. And then we'll do a deep dive 1.30 video when the actual release comes out as we usually do. So one of the things uh, Kubernetes user namespace is moving to beta. It is more into the security space. It adds more security. So think of it as whenever there is a escape or a container breakout. So whenever someone breaks out of the container, they get access to the host and they are able to access the host. With this, with the user namespace, which is different from the kernel namespace and the usual Kubernetes namespaces concept. You have a container and then the UID and GID of the container will be different on the host. It will be root inside the container, but different on the host. So when it comes to the host, it will have less number of privileges and the attack surface get reduced. So uh, it isolates the UUIDs and GIDs of the containers from the host and limits the container breakout. Uh, in 1.30, you can add custom ranges in the kubelet. Uh, also, if the container runtime doesn't support, it will not fail. It will actually create the pod irrespective. So, for example, if you have a pod, in the pod, GYD, GID and UID are 0. And the other mentioned over here is 61187, which is the one which you will be seeing on the host. So, on host, every container which will be running will have a separate UID and GID that makes them do limited number of operations on the host even if there is a container breakout. So that is the uh, Kubernetes user namespace moving to beta. A secret sync controller. So this is a fancy new feature which is coming up uh, kind of aiming to be a seamless way to read the secrets, sync with the external store secrets, uh, get the secrets from the provider as gate secret store for online and offline access. Major is the offline portion of it. Uh, and also it will work in conjunction with the secret store CSI driver. If you do not know what a secret store CSI driver is, I have a full end-to-end -end video on Cube Simplifier already there. Uh, image pull secrets also moves to alpha. Node log query moves to beta. Validating admission policy moves to GA. Very big milestone. And if you don't know about validating admission policy, I covered when the feature was announced in alpha. So make sure to check that video out as well. Recursive read-only mounts in alpha. It's very interesting because when you when you do the read-only draw in, in the YAML manifest, it's not always that all the sub-directories in that particular directories will be read-only. So this recursive read-only makes the sub-directories within the read-only directory also read-only. So that is why the recursive read-only is there. So you have to enable the feature gate for that and also uh, add this particular thing in conjunction with the read only so you specify read only true and then you specify recursive read only um, and it has a few values if possible enabled and disabled uh, then also structured authorization configuration moving to beta and then some of the other features that were also mentioned in the sneak peek of kubernetes blog that was released by the release team for example the structured parameters for dynamic resource allocation has been evolving since 1.26 and it introduces a framework for making resource allocation parameters less opaque. Uh, node memory swap support also in 1.30. The behavior of memory swap support in Linux node is changing to improve the system stability. Unlimited swap behavior is removed. Structure authorization configuration now in beta enables to create authorization chains with multiple webhooks for fine-grained control over request validation. And it also supports 
PEL route for pre-filtering the request. Uh, container resource based for auto scaling, um, graduating to stable. This improvement allows the HPA, which is the horizontal pod auto scaler, to scale based on individual container resource usage rather than the pod aggregate usage. So, and then there are a lot of features. I'm not diving into uh, everything, but you should definitely check out all the announcements that the release team is making and uh, also all the stuff that is being done with respect to the KEPS. KEPS, Kubernetes Enhancement Proposal, is the best way to actually understand everything about a particular feature, implementation, goals, non-goals, and where they are in terms of the stability as well. With this, now let's move on to what we actually want to do. So what we want to achieve here is, before the actual release, we want to test out the new features. Maybe you have created or you want to contribute to Kubernetes and you want to test your changes, features, all that stuff. So how you can do it is, first of all, you need to clone the repository and you need to switch to the branch in which you are working. In this particular case, you can see I am on the release 1.30 branch. Once you do that, now you need to build the node image. So very simple to build that. Just use kind build node image. It starts to build everything uh, and also it verifies some of the prerequisites and if you, you know, uh, just make sure you have the latest version of kind, you have golang 1.22 plus and whatever operating system you are in. So right now I am on my Mac M1 machine and even on this it works. So it should ideally work in your environment as well. Uh, and then it starts to build out all the stuff from the repository and the branch that you have mentioned to build out a, a kind node image that then we'll be using in the configuration file. So as you can see, the image kind set node latest has been built successfully. We can also do docker image ls grep kind and we'll be able to see 48 seconds ago, the image has been built with the latest tag. So what we are going to do is we will be creating a config file for the cluster where we'll be specifying the image that we want to build and with the number of nodes that we want to spin up. So here it's a, it's, we want kind of three node behavior where one is control plane and other two are workers. And then we specify the image for that, which is kind set node latest. So let's build it uh, using the kind command, kind create cluster, give it a name and then specify the config file which is there we press enter we wait for some time so the node image it ensures it is there preparing the nodes and just starting the control plane and workers and stuff uh, it will soon be completed and we'll get a working kubernetes cluster with the latest with the latest node image that we just built from the git repository branch release 1.30 and it's already there uh, so you can see you have kubernetes up and running so what we'll do is we will do kubectl config use on text and use this particular context and then kubectl get nodes and here you go so you now have a kubernetes 1.30 rc uh, version with you to play around with the latest kubernetes version now you can run end-to-end -end tests you can run kubectl run nginx image nginx and obviously use some of the features that I told as well. So with this, you can actually run E2E tests. You can run conformance tests. You can run upgrades to this particular version and see if, if that is breaking. And you can also see if, uh, and you can also try out some of the features which are already merged, uh, like some of the alpha features or move to stable or move to beta. So that was it for this particular video. I wanted to keep it simple, but also wanted to give you some of the information sneak peek that the Kubernetes release team has given and also features that I'm more interested in and how you can actually test out Kubernetes 1.30. So make sure go check Kubernetes 1.30, read out some of the blogs for 1.30 by Armo, um, a couple of others which are already there and just try out some of the features and give more feedback and do mention on Dim's tweet uh, that you now have created a 1.30 clusters, go to GitHub issues, create stuff over there, what is working, what is not. I think community feedback is pretty important in the releases and the Kubernetes team has spoken that they need more feedback. So go for it, try it out and give feedback on Kubernetes 1.30. Also, do not forget to mention what is your favorite Kubernetes feature that you are looking forward to. 
And with that, we we'll wrap up this particular video. If you like it, do share, subscribe, like, and share it with your friends so that everyone can play around with Kubernetes 1.30 coin clusters. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.